This is level number three. In level number three, you can see the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Here it is. And the anterior horn of lateral ventricle shows this bulging structure in the lateral wall. That's the head of caudate nucleus in the lateral wall of the anterior horn. Also, between the, the anterior horn, in this side and that side, there is the septum piglostum. The septum piglostum is attached to the genu. So this is the genu of the corpus callosum. Since you identify this is the head of caudate and this is the genu, this is anterior to that is frontal pole, occipital pole, this is frontal lobe and this is occipital lobe. Now, between the head of caudate and the lengthy form, this is part of the internal capsule, it's called the anterior limb. Internal capsule has four parts shown here. The first part is the anterior limb, then this is the genome of the internal capsule, this is the posterior limb of the internal capsule, and this is the retro lenticular or retro lentiform part of the internal capsule. It's just behind the lentiform nucleus, that's why it's called retro lentiform or retro lenticular. This part contains the optic radiation. So you can say optic radiation or retro lentiform part of the internal capsule. Because the optic radiation is the only structure that occupies the retro lentiform part of the internal capsule. The, this part? Yeah. This part is called the retro lenticular or retro lentiform part of the internal capsule. Since it's an internal capsule, it's a white matter, contains fibers. What kind of fibers is? Only one type is the optic radiation. So the only thing running here is the optic radiation running in the retro lentiform part of the internal capsule. Laterally, here you can see this is the lateral fissure and this is the insula. The insula has gray matter. This is the insular cortex, the gray matter of the insular cortex. Medial to it, you can see the extreme capsule, and then this is the claustrum. Claustrum. Then the external capsule. So you get white matter, which is the extreme capsule, gray matter, claustrum. External capsule is the white matter again. And then you can see the lentiform nucleus. Lentiform nucleus has laterally located putamen, medial located globus pallidus. has two segments, medial segment and lateral segment. So this is part of the lentiform, yeah. Pyotamine is the lateral segment of the lentiform, lateral part of the lentiform. Corpus striatum. Corpus striatum includes the caudate nucleus and putamen. Okay. Now, between the head of caudate and the lentiform, this is the anterior limb of internal capsule. The genome is here between the lentiform and the space of the lateral ventricle, and the thalamus here is separated from the lentiform by the posterior limb of internal capsule. So the posterior limb of internal capsule separating the thalamus from the lentiform. Thalamus is showing a dark area here. This is the anterior nucleus of thalamus, while this is the pulmonar or posterior nucleus of thalamus. Between the two thalami, the space here is called the third ventricle. If you look posteriorly, you can see another space. This is a trigon of the lateral ventricle. The trigon of the lateral ventricle contains the choroid plexus and it's containing another structure here. This is the cross of the fornix. The cross of the fornix comes from this side and that side and unite in the midline to make the body of the fornix. So this is the body of the fornix. The body of the fornix is located at the inferior border of the septum pilosum. In the anterior part of the trigon, you can identify easily this dark area, which is the tail of the death nucleus. So this is the head of the death, this is the tail of the death nucleus. And also, you can see the stenium of the corpus callosum. Any question? Is it clear? Uh, yeah, the, the choroid mixture is present only in the lateral and the trigon of the lateral. It's absent in the anterior and posterior? Yeah, it's absent from the anterior and posterior horn, but it's present in the body or the central part of the lateral ventricle. It's present in the trigon and the anterior horn. Okay? It's also present in the roof of the third ventricle. And it's also present in the roof of the fourth ventricle. Mm -hmm. The fornix, yeah. Two cross and body. Five components. Alveus, fimbria, cross, body, and column. The last thing is called the column. This column ends in the mammillary body. Okay. The arteries here, you can identify this is the middle cerebral artery here, and this is the anterior cerebral artery. And if someone asks you about this, that would be the posterior cerebral arc. Okay. okay. Hmm? Three arteries only. Anterior cerebral, middle cerebral, posterior cerebral. Okay.
Any other question? Repeat it or that's okay? okay? This is level number five. It's the lowest level. It shows you the structures that are seen at the base of the brain. So you can clearly identify this level by this optic nerve on each side and then united in the middle optic chiasm and then the optic tract. On each side of the optic tract you can see this is the internal carotid artery and the internal carotid artery is giving a branch running laterally in the lateral fascia that's the middle cerebral artery. This is the anterior cerebral artery. The posterior cerebral artery is here and going to the back around the midbrain. Around the midbrain. So it's running laterally. And then it will supply this area. Okay? Just behind the optic chiasm, you can see the infundibulum. Infundibulum that's connected to the pituitary stock. Posterior to the infundibulum, you can see the two mammary bodies. And then this is the cerebral peduncle. Between the two cerebral peduncles, this is the interpeduncular fossa. Okay. The interpeduncular fossa contains posterior perforated substance or posterior perforated space. And there are two other perforated spaces, the two anterior and one posterior. So you have right anterior perforated space, left posterior perforated space, but one, okay. sorry, what? Two anterior. two anterior and one posterior. The right anterior, left anterior, but one posterior. So you have total of three perforated spaces. The right anterior perforated space and left anterior perforated space, these two contain vessels that are penetrating the substance of the brain. They are called the perforating branches or the striate branches of the middle and anterior cerebral arteries are going to supply the basal ganglia through the anterior perforated spaces on the right and left. The posterior perforated space, which is only one posterior perforated, it contains perforating branches from the posterior cerebral arch. So this is posterior cerebral, this is anterior and middle cerebral. You can see a space here, this is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. The anterior horn contains the choroid plexus. And in the floor of the anterior horn, you can identify the hippocampus. This is the hippocampal formation. And here to the hippocampus, you can see the amygdala or amygdaloid nucleus. There are three nuclei you can see here. The three nuclei make the amygdala or amygdaloid nuclear complex. This is here, amygdala. And it's just in the anterior anteromedial part of the temporal lobe. So this is the temporal lobe. This is the anteromedial part of the temporal lobe. The amygdala is called the subcortical component of the ancus. If you have seen the ancus in the brain, if you cut the ancus, look deep in the structure of the ancus, you will be able to see the amygdala, deep to the ancus, okay? Here you can see the verms of the cerebellum, and this is actually the inferior verms, and on each side of it, this is the cerebellar tonsil. Cerebellar tonsil. Okay, that concludes everything here. You have any questions? Oh, okay. The internal structures of the midbrain. Here, this is a cross cerebri. The cerebral peduncle contains the cross cerebri that contains the corticobulbar, corticospinal tract, and corticopontine. This is a substantia nigra. This is a red nucleus on each side, and this is a cerebral aqueduct surrounded by the periaqueductal gray. Here, this is a superior colliculus. So it's one level of the midbrain that shows the superior colliculus, red nucleus, and also the oculomotor nerve. So the oculomotor nerve is at this level of the midbrain, showing superior colliculus, red nucleus, and the oculomotor nerve nuclei are here in the periaqueductal gray matter. So there is a section shows red nucleus, that means it is at the superior colliculus. Yes, and it means it's at the level of the oculomotor nuclei. The other level of the midbrain is called the level of the inferior colliculus. The level of inferior colliculus contains the trochlear nerve nucleus and also contains the crossing of the superior cerebellar peduncle, the decalcation of the superior cerebellar peduncle. The, the structures that are the same between the upper level and lower level of the midbrain are the cross cerebri substantia nigra. These two are continuous. You can see it in the superior level and you can see it also in the inferior level of the midbrain. The cross cerebri and substantia nigra. Okay. You have any question? You need to repeat. You can see it here. It's at level number four, which is missing here. You will see it with Dr. Varna in the uh, specimen, not in the model. Yeah, this is the cerebral 
cerebral peduncle. Cerebral peduncle is connecting the brain stem to the cerebrum. It's not cerebellar, it's cerebral peduncle. Yeah. The cerebral peduncle contains the cross cerebri and substantial nitro. Yeah, this the, is the interpeduncular fossa. Interpeduncular? Yeah, interpeduncular. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Interpeduncular fossa. Okay? Any question? Mm -hmm. I was there. No, no, because you want to explain to other people the supply of Okay, okay.